Hello race fans, RC fans, Sim fans, Racing 393. Oh, damage. Here we go. What we're going to do now is I'm going to get this, finally get this out, get it running um, with the upgrades I've done. Uh, ball bearings, sort of high speed bearings. Um, what else have I done to it? A bit of wiring, so it's a bit more consistent with the wiring. We're going to try it on a nickel metal, nickel metal hard drive battery, which is 5,000 milliamp hour. And then we're going to compare that with a 2S uh, 5,500 milliamp hour. Now I'm aware that the, the milliamps and the, is only the capacity of the battery. So it's not really going to be like super fast or much faster. However, I'm hoping there'll be a, an increase in speed. Uh, a bit of a weight save as well so yeah it seems all ready to go um quite looking forward to it let's uh let's okay, get so it out got, there. Yeah, the, the, uh, tto 1e out now what i've tried is um i put it back on the uh, nickel metal hydride battery 5000 milliamp hour i'm going to compare the two so we've got this one and then we've got 2s so we're going to give it a go. Runs reasonably straight ish. I've done this, I have done the, uh, the braking. But because of the other side, the one-way diff, um, it only works on the back wheels. So let's see what that got. So that there was 42 miles an hour, which is generally what I expect to get out of this car. I think 43 is my maximum. So um, let's try that again. Remember, this is a nickel metal hydride battery of 5,000 milliamp hour. Uh, I'm just going to sort the trim out. Just hit a little tough of grass then. Um, let's see. So it's only 40 miles an hour. That was a bit of a smoother run. Um, 42. We're going to give it one more go. And then I'm going to change to my uh, 2S. You can see the gyro overcorrecting, then that needs to be turned down a little bit, I think. So I think that's going to be about it for that battery. 41, so it's about 43 miles an hour as a top speed. So what we're going to do now is put the 2S in it and just see if it's much quicker. 
so it's really really hot here today um, and I've just felt that plug that that plug is absolutely like melted together that's hot let me just check the temperature you can't see that the, the plug is 70 degrees The ground's 52, 65 degrees that motor is, that is well hot. Um, let me just move the car. Sixty-four degrees, so that bit's sixty-four. And that's not even touching the motor. That is hot. Okay, so I put the uh, 2S in. I'm gonna give that a go. All right, let's give it a go. Done the trim. Wounded. Right, let's try again. Keep away from them fucking thorns. They've gone right into my fingers. Sorry, I didn't mean to swear, but it really hurt. <laughs> It's impossible to keep straight and I've only put a 2S in it and it, it ain't as quick so it's not the power 32 miles an hour So the problem is, I can't keep it straight now. I've no idea why. Less weight. It's only 38 miles now, but that's only because I can't keep it straight in a straight line. Have another look. 32 miles an hour. So for some reason it's not putting out the amount of power. Maybe the uh, this that type of 2S ain't ain't suitable. So temperature-wise, 
the plug. 64. It's not as hot. Fifty three is the motor, what I can get of it. Ground temperature is forty seven. The, e the uh, ESC is quite hot. Yeah, the ESC is a bit hot. It's super hot though. I wouldn't say it's dangerously hot. So. <sighs> right, let's give it one more go because it is getting rather hot. Right, so this should be the final run now because it's cooled down a little bit. 2S LiPo. <laughs> Must be something I'm doing. It's probably a combination of what I'm running, to be honest. Now that's just the uh, gyro kicking in and sending it over the place. The gyro wants turning down. Let's look at the gyro a minute. So I have altered them. I've turned them down, both. One's One's a throttle, one's a steering, just to see if it makes any difference. Really difficult to see. Okay, so I've done the uh, trim, um, but GPS signal problem as well. It's not, it's not really, it's got, I don't know, got a bad signal today. So let's see if we can get this down here, see if it's straight. Straight there anyway. No, absolutely no way. There's no way that's gonna keep straight. Well, where should I start? Now, firstly, I do apologise. The uh, the battery on my camera, my recording device, uh, went flat, so it, it kind of ended abruptly. So um, I'm just going to put some. Uh, I'm indoors now. I'm going to put some light on. Um, hang on. There we go. We'll see a bit better. So yeah. So apologies for that. It went flat. So how do we fare? <laughs> Fucking shit! Well, it wasn't too bad, right? This is not um, Bunny Stretch, uh, a video for kids. So uh, it says quite clearly on my um, analytics that this is not a kids video. But my God, I'm I'm baffled, bazooed. I don't know. I'm making words up now. This. So uh, a bit of a recap. Uh, it had new bearings in it, high speed bearings. We'll take that as what you will. That they were put on the car. The wiring was done. Um, again, we'll come back to that. And I used a, a normal NIM battery, a 5000 milliamp hour old style battery. We've still got the brushed motor on there. And um, we, we took it out, didn't we? So we went out. Um, f f is it 43 or something? 42 miles an hour. It's not bad. I mean, you've got to think. This is, like I've said before, I've said it many times, old technology. It's an older style of Tamiya chassis. Um, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm still fairly pleased with that. It's sort of out of the box, but it seems to have plateaued. It seems to have got where it's got. It could be a combination of me, uh, the car, and perhaps where I'm running it. Uh, uh, I've still got some other you know upgrades i can do like some gearing upgrades i just want to get this one stable we then put the um 2s lipo on it so it's lighter it does have more capacity um, i'm not expecting huge amounts of gains in top speed but you know if it's less weight slightly more capacity you should get a bit of an increase two three mile an hour so i was expecting i'm hoping like 50 it's not going to get nowhere near that but you know if it did 43 before 45 you know maybe 46 maybe but 
yeah, come on, it should do it. But no, no. It, I think it only topped out at, I don't know, I can't remember now, was it 41 or 39? Whichever it was, it was less. And it's just changing the battery. Um, but it became so unstable. Oh my God, it was unstable. Now, part of that, which I'll, again, I will show, I'm gonna move the camera, this. So these wheels, see that, that's the uh, side to side movement. There's no, uh, that's the shock. There's a bit of movement there, but it's this on both wheels. Now that's to do with the aftermarket steering upgrade, the bridge I've put on it. It's not an official Tamiya product. Um, let me let me show you what it is. I'm just going to take, uh, I'll take the body shell off. So there's the steering bridge, that blue steering arm there that joins the track control arm. And then you've got the bridge, which goes from one side uh, to the other. Now that is an aftermarket one. And if you look closely, we well, don't have to look that closely. It's more the other side actually. Let me just spin this round. It's more this side, I'll be honest. Something has to be done here. I'm going to move the wheel again, the correct way. So you look at that there, look. On this side, get my own hands in the way here. There's movement there at that end, with that one on that side, that one on that side, plus this track control arm is a bit loose there on the this side of the car. So that alone, that alone is not going to be helpful. The back's absolutely fine with the upgrade. Um, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, it's fine. There's no mo or less movement in there. But oh my god! Now it's got a, a um, what are they called? Uh, a receiver with stability control. So it sort of corrects itself if it finds it going wanders a little bit to keep it straight and you can see that working and i'm going to try and show you a close-up here uh what i'll probably do here is get um i'll show you it in real time i did try it when i was actually out and about but uh, that there has got the the stability control controls on the top there, and I did try to adjust them. I will uh, show you a bit of a, more of a close up on that. So here we have. Uh, it's not a particularly clear picture. Uh, I, I, I was going to take a picture on my phone, which I've got in front of me, but I've run out of USB ports on my computer to transfer it. Anyway, so that's a close up. So those two uh adjustments in the middle there they're kind of a the one on the left steering gain and the one on the right is throttle gain grain throttle gain it's got a fail safe built in as well should you lose a uh, signal now looking at the uh, adjustments you've got a numbers around you can't see that they're really small so I've zoomed in on my phone you've got what seems like numbers around the edge and then that little turn adjustment screw that you've got a special tool for which you can twist at uh, anti-clockwise or clockwise at the moment it looks like it's set to it's very really difficult to see um, uh, around the sort of the edge you got looks like two three i don't know and a five and an in between so oh, it goes round it's got two little where you turn the adjustment screw you can fit your key in there to turn it and also towards the end of where the screw is you've got two little dots marks if you like they're actual indentations they're super small and i can only see them by zooming in on my phone you'd never see them by looking at it like that let alone in real life 
the angle that I've got them at, if you if, I, if you think that's a clock face, it's kind of at like five to five, maybe ten to five, a ten to five position for the steering gain, and a ten to five for the throttle gain. And there's something in this that's making it not work. <laughs> uh, I have got a manual. Again, the writing's super small, so I'm gonna have to look at, look for it uh, via a mic, a microscope underneath it. Then uh, a magnifying glass, which I've got. I'm gonna have to revisit that again. I did read up on it before, um, but I never really. It was ages ago. Um, yeah, so something to do with that needs to be adjusted. Uh, yeah, it's got numbers around there. It looks, it looks like 0 2, 0 2, 3, 5. And it's got an in-between as well, like 2, and it's got something, then 3. Um, I'm unsure myself. I will, I'm going to have to look it up. If I had to sort of say what's wrong, could it, it could be too sensitive? I guess the more clockwise you turn that screw, the more sensitive it is. The throttle gain, if that's what it is, I mean, maybe I should turn that down to zero. Because you could have the, the settings on the speed controller might might be better. I don't know. Somebody that knows more than me, let me know what I need to do on that. Um, it's going to be a little bit of trial and error, I'm afraid. So that's... I did try to fiddle with that when I was out and about. Um, you can barely see it, if I'm honest. But, yeah, it did make a, it did make a difference. So I think I did turn it, and it was super sensitive. And now it, it isn't. So... Anyway, that's a close-up of the... Uh, receiver the um, FSBS3 from Flysky uh, yeah any anyone knows more about these ones and what I'm saying or can help me then uh, I would appreciate that so uh, anyway yeah we're gonna get back to the uh, you know the actual video but over the, overall um, not a successful I'm just gonna put the camera down so I'm sort of talking with it in my hand uh, nowhere near as successful as it should have been. Um, definitely, the steering part of it here needs looking at. Uh, the other upgrade I've actually gone and, gone out and bought. Now I do have these in stock, but I didn't want to take them out of stock, so I've bought them myself. And that's the low friction shocks, front and rear. So I will still use these red coil springs. And I've been using these shock absorbers I've got on the car for, for ages now. And they're okay. They, they work fine. But I still think they could still... They could do have been a little bit softer. These are soft Tamiya springs on there already. But I just feel that... That it needs to be a little more stable on the tarmac. Now I know I've had quite a few comments. Um, the things I can change. You know, put foams on it. Run, run the car lower. People have said, I, I get that. You know, I'm trying to do things as, you know, as as near as off the shelf as possible without getting anything too, anything too fancy. The, the shock absorbers are probably the most important part of this, if I'm honest. And that steering, it's been a bit of a letdown. I've been trying for quite a while now to get this car above 43 and there's many 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 TT01, 01Es, 02 chassis probably more standard but a quicker I get it okay I'm not, I'm not daft um, as many of you out there that can do far better but this is just probably you know this is aimed for the trials and tribulations that you know, I'm fairly experienced with RC, but things that you come across, I'm not out every weekend in my RC car, I don't get time, and this isn't the only one I've got, so, you know, I do a lot of nitro as well. So it's just trying to sort of 
buy things, try some new technology. Now this fan, for example, is new from Schumacher. Um, but lo and behold, it doesn't seem to cool it enough. As you saw in the video, it was like horrendously hot. Um, I think the limitations are with the uh, 1060 speed controller. Again, I know there's loads of people out there that can use that and get better results. Um, I'm not daft. So I'm just sort of taking you on my journey and my problems that I find. I do listen to comments, I do look them up. You know, I've got, I have some foam tires for this, uh, but I'm not gonna use them until I've got this more sorted. The fact that it's not as stable with the LiPo in it, well, I don't know, it's, it, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to come up with a, an answer. It's lighter. It must weigh a lot less on this side of the chassis than what all that does, maybe. Where the the normal NIMH battery spreads the weight more and it's heavier, so it'll make it more stable. Because you'll notice in the video, it was running reasonably straight uh, on the first attempt. And then the second attempt, it was all over the shot. I just could not keep it in a straight line. But I'm, I'm still not gonna give up. <laughs> you know, I, this is really good fun. So the next time you see this, um, it should, have some shock upgrades. Hoping I may have got this sorted out a little bit more with the stability for the steering. Um, and that's about it really for now. I mean, I, I have got, like I've said before, I've got my, this is just an upgrade for weight saving. I've got my um, carbon fiber front and rear shock towers having if I've changed them I'll have to change the body position which means drilling more holes in my current body which I might not do um, or I'll just get another body shell a different rally car and we'll try again um, talking to the body shell let me just uh, let me just grab that quickly before we uh, close this video my RS 200 shell the, the front fog lights come flying off so they just kind of stuck. I can. It does. It looks alright with that, but I can just glue them back on. Uh, the rear spoiler is a bit loose. Again, it's only hot glued on. Like that. That is going to come off. Well, it's almost off as it is. And I've only got um, like four holes in the shell, so you know, normal sort of fixing holes, front and rear. I don't really want to put more in it, really, because I think I might sell this shell. Those that want to. A cheap, a really cheap shell. Uh, I'm not sure what I'll do yet. I might do a quick, a, a special offer on this one when I get to sell it. It's nothing special. It's just if you want the shell that I used. I don't know. Do you want it? <laughs> we'll, we'll come to some arrangement when I get a new body shell for the chassis. It's just something I had in mind. Um, yeah. So there we are. Good and bad. Um, much, much more to do. We'll get there. There's, you know, it should be there by now, shouldn't I? But you know, these sort of these problems are only coming into a light as I add more stuff to the car. It has made it has made improvements, but there's a bit of a barrier I need to cross, and it's that 43 mile an hour barrier. Um, I might have to. You know, bearing in mind, I've got the, the long. I've got another gearing I can put on it, so you need more distance. And the problem is where I'm at, it's not as smooth for something like this as I'd like it to be. It's not a buggy. Um, I, there is another area I can use. I might give that a look. It's not perfect, but it's smoother. Uh, but I've got to get the stability done. So next time, steering adjustments. Um, uh, what else was it? Oh, steering adjustments and this uh, stability control setting in there. Anyway, that's supposed to be a quick a quick closing part of the video, but because the, the battery went flat and I didn't have time to do it, so uh, 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 charging the battery up. So this is slightly after the event. Um, incidentally, before I go, the, I did the wiring to help with the battery, but for some reason I noticed that this fan wasn't as constant it was like pulsing uh, I don't know if that's a thing um, 
is plugged in correctly here. I did have problems with this mounted where it should be mounted. It wasn't working because the magneto, the magnets were affected by the motor. I don't know, we found that out. Even Schumacher didn't know what was going on with that because I did speak to them. So I nearly returned the fan. Um, high speed bearings are a myth, maybe. Um, and the one way clutch is a pain in the ass for braking. I've sort of worked that out. I did some uh, ABS adjustment. It probably wants a little bit of more end point adjustment to be honest on the braking. So it's constantly braking, but lighter. So it doesn't sort of throw the car around. So yeah, we'll get in there. Anyway, I hope you liked it. Uh, it does get views. So something must be working. Uh, I appreciate anyone that subscribes and watches my videos from start to finish. It does help. Uh, my analytics do change and it's nice to see people watching. You know, it's a different perspective of RC. There's many more uh, channels out there which do a better job, not as good job, more watchable, less watchable. You know, end of the day, we're all doing a hobby we enjoy, aren't we? So anyway, stop talking. Stop filling in the gap. We're now at 15 minutes. It's going to be a bit of a longer video. But thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.